Book Business. I am your host, Dr. Neva, and today I am with someone very special traveling all the way from Kenya, the continent of Africa. Next to me, we have Ambassador Ivan Kamanti. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's, uh, I'm happy to be here. I'm and I love Brooklyn already. <laughs> Well, that's good to know. Very happy that you love Brooklyn. You like what you see so far. Absolutely, right? and I can't wait to see more. Excellent. So can you tell us why are you in town? Well, as um, most people are aware, because of the crazy traffic that has been created in New York <laughs> by visitors like myself and others, uh, we have the United Nations General Assembly going on. And that's why we had world leaders here, uh, including my boss, the foreign minister of Kenya, and uh, your president that you chose, <laughs> President Trump. Uh, but also on the sidelines of the General Assembly, we had an award ceremony uh, of MIPAD, class of 2017. Yes, and I had the privilege of actually being to the gala and mm -hmm. I want you to just tell the audience, what is MIPAD? What does it stand for? What is it about? MIPAD is the most influential people of African descent. And um, it is a creation of one of the UN uh, General Assembly resolutions uh, to celebrate the decade of people of African descent. And so MIPAD was created by civil society uh, to identify and recognize people that have made notable achievements within the continent of Africa and without uh, or outside uh, Africa, from the Caribbean to the US, uh, to Europe, to Asia. And um, so we actually had 200 people that were recognized, 100 people from the continent and 100 people of African descent from outside the continent. Wow, and who are some of the individuals that participated in this event? Let me start with Kenya, uh, where I come from. With Kenya, we had uh, four notable nominees. The first is our Minister for Information, Communication and Technology, uh, the Honorable Mosheru, mm -hmm. our cab Cabinet Secretary. And uh, because Kenya has made a lot of strides in ICT. Or let me also re uh, say this, that uh, the honorees are below 40. So people who made remarkable achievements. You tell and that, your age uh, there. Oh, I have no problem <laughs> telling my age. <laughs> Young leader. Absolutely, by God's grace. And uh, then we had, we, we have a member of parliament, of our legislative assembly, uh, Senator Naisula Lesuda, uh, under the politics and governance um, uh, category. She was recognized because of her role in peace building. Uh, she comes from a border area where there's a lot of cattle rustling, um, where they practice female genital mutilation, where they have early child marriages, and she'd been at the forefront of leading uh, the fight against all these vices. And then we have uh, an honorable member of parliament also. Uh, his name is Wesley Corey. Uh He should be quite popular uh, in the US. He wins most of the marathons. Uh, <laughs> specifically in Boston. Um, so he came from running to running a constituency uh, and being in parliament. And his counterpart, oh, I, I'm sure you would know, is uh, Hussein, Hussein Bolt. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And so these are people that uh, have been showcasing uh, and, and been ambassadors of sports, you know, for the region and for people of African descent. So those are four from Kenya. As I've mentioned, we have Bolt. I, I think, I believe I saw Beyonce. Yeah, the names were there. The names were there. Akon is one of the people that uh, is, is of uh, a person of African descent uh, that was notable. And from the continent, we had uh, quite a number. In fact, I think uh, we had from Egypt to South Africa, the continent was pretty much covered. In. Pretty much covered. And we had someone from CNN as well, right? Yes, CNN Inside Africa, the head of CNN Inside Africa. Uh, she was there also. So, 
what does this award mean to you? What does it mean to me? Yeah. Well, it's, it's just more pressure, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> How so? Uh, you know, it, it puts more responsibility on me and whatever it is I, I do anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a chance to showcase and push the agenda that is already there with the African Union. Or let me say this, you know, the African Union uh, takes the diaspora mm -hmm. as the sixth region. So in Africa, we have five regions, North Africa, East Africa, Central Africa, West Africa, Southern Africa, and now diaspora. Now the question is how to integrate diaspora in everything that we do, mm -hmm. be it policy, economics, mm -hmm. every single area of governance, leadership, participation, mm -hmm. you know? How do we ensure that you're in Brazil, but you are still part of the continent, you're still part of the dialogue and the discussion that we have? Uh, luckily for me, I'm, I'm from government. Okay. So these are conversations that I will take to policy makers. That I have met, I have seen, I have heard. These are some of the challenges that have been raised by people of African descent living outside the continent, outside the purview of our laws and everything else. And therefore, when we engage with member states where we have people of African descent, mm -hmm. for example, when Kenya engages with the US, we will keep saying our people are in the US. One thing you mentioned that stood out, I mean, everything that stood out, but you mentioned Brazil. Mm -hmm. And being at um, NEPAD event, I realized it's not just about the continent of Africa, but African descent. Yes. And hence the reason why you mentioned Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, can you enlighten us a little bit about what they're trying to do as far as the African descent? So not necessarily you're born in Africa, mm -hmm. but what's that connection, that bridge? The, the African Union ambassador to Washington said something very interesting. And she rem well, actually, she reminded us what was said uh, during the formation of the Organization of African Unity. And she said, you know, to be African is not because you're born in Africa, but because Africa is in you. Yes. Right? Uh, Brazil is an interesting uh, case because in Brazil, uh, I think almost 10 years ago, by law now, uh, African history is taught. It's compulsory in schools. And that's, that's needed. It is needed. Hopefully we can do the same thing here. <laughs> <laughs> I think in certain places they're trying, but it's still not enough. That's just my opinion on mm -hmm. the matter. Now, as a woman, you know, I have to bring this part up. How do you feel your leadership role played in society? Hmm. As a woman. As a woman. Or as a leader. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? <laughs> Let's take it from there. As a female leader. As a You're not letting the woman part go, are you? No, I'm not. <laughs> I come from a society that has um, an African society that has previously not been very friendly, open, welcoming, supportive, or even understanding of women in leadership, women in office, ambitious women. And this is in all sectors, not just uh, politics or governance, but you know, even in the education sector, in the private sector. But that is changing. And, I mean, you can see number of women that have been elected to office uh, as presidents. Uh, we have vice presidents. In Kenya, we just had our elections. And for the first time, we have two women governors. I think, you know, we're doing quite well. Uh, elected, not selected, who fought it out. Uh, women members of parliament, women senators. And uh, I must say, though, the paradigm shift is also helped by the law and rule of law. So as much as when I got into office, into public office, uh, 10 years ago I got into foreign service, it was hard. 
but now there are more women walking on the corridors. In fact, I think we probably have more women than we do have uh, men. And women tend to do a lot better. We empathize more. Uh, we listen more. We care more. That motherly instinct, I guess. Absolutely. You mentioned 10 years ago that when you started. Can you tell us a little bit about you? Who are you? And how have you come to this point? <laughs> um, 10 years ago, I was appointed by a uh, former president of Kenya, Mwai Kibaki. Uh, as ambassador and deputy permanent representative of Kenya to Ethiopia and the African Union. I was all of 24, 25, and, um, well, let's just say a lot of my colleagues were not amused, you know, who's this small girl? How can you appoint a girl <laughs> and married, female? Unmarried. Young. So that was a problem? It was a problem. I, I, as I mentioned, you know, it's a patriarchal society. And in a field that has been predominantly male, older male, older retired male, tired older. <laughs> 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 I could go on and on. And uh, the question was, you know, wow, how does the president appoint this girl? And then send her to a mission that is so strategic for Africa because Ethiopia hosts the African Union and the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. And of course, my president then did not understand because for him, he said he's, he's a independence baby, so to speak. He was in the first cabinet of the country. And when he got in, he was 27 years old. So he didn't see the difference between a 27 year old and a 24 year old. I mean, he's like when we got into government and we started this government. Mm -hmm. It was the young people that were fresh from school that were given the jobs to do. So I've given her a job to do and uh, let her go ahead and, and do it. And uh, for 10 years, I've st I still remain the youngest. But there are those that have come that are maybe two or three years older than me, which has not happened before. So the changes are there, and people are now more and more accepting. There are younger officers that are coming in, fresh graduates from school. We call them cadets. And uh, it was hard. Many times I, I, I was tired and wanted to walk out. And several times I threw tantrums and told my boss so. What kept you, though? Prayers. My mother. <laughs> you should meet her. Anyway. So <laughs> it's by God's grace. But when I, I, life is not easy either way. Yes. And the battles will be there whichever field you decide to take. And uh, someone must um, open, uh, be inside to open the doors for others to get in. Definitely, I agree with you on that. Now, you mentioned going back to MEPAD. One thing that highlighted was the entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Now, bringing entrepreneurship or business opportunities in Kenya, what is it like? Are the doors open for people to invest in Kenya? Kenya is definitely open for business. Uh, we're open to, for work, for investment opportunities. Um, I think in uh, East Africa especially, mm -hmm. um, there's the ease of doing business is, is now being seen and being felt. You can come in, register your company, I think two, three days, get your work permit, uh, settle down, work, but just make sure you also involve local talent because okay. we have a, a huge youthful uh, population. So let me ask, is there a policy in place that basically state that you need to utilize the Kenyans that are on ground? For skills that can be found at home, yes. Okay. Are people following the guidelines? In Kenya, we follow the rule of law. We're not a banana republic. Okay. <laughs> I ask because, you know, some countries, you know, you have the law, but people are 
not following it. You know, they come in as expats or business owners or whatever, and they set up shop but don't utilize the people that are there. So they basically take the money mm -hmm. out of the country that they have made and walk away, and then your country is stripped. Absolutely. Yeah. No, but for us, we, we, we have... Uh, enforcement mechanisms and uh, the law works and uh, you know as they say big brother is watching so you can't come and set up a company without the knowledge of the government that is excellent yeah so what are some of the companies one can invest in in Kenya infrastructure tourism I mean Kenya is one of the, if not the most beautiful and not that I'm biased by the way uh, <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, tourism, and all types of tourism. Medical tourism. I mean, uh, Kenya is, is a hub in the region. Uh, conference tourism. We host the United Nations offices in Nairobi and therefore host countless meetings every year. Um, I said medical tourism, conference tourism, we have hotels, resorts, and lots and lots of land. Uh, so people are free to come in and uh, see. Oh, and we recently discovered oil. Oh, really? Yes, we did. Wow. In the northern part of the country. Wow. And where I come from, it's called Ikolomani. Ikolomani is a, is a term that actually is gold mine. And uh, they discovered serious amounts and deposits of gold. And so I think there's a South African firm that is now uh, on site. South African firm? Yes. And, and I, I'm sure that will benefit Kenyans. Absolutely. Okay. But it's all good that it's still... It's African. Okay, that's what I was going to say. It's Absolutely. We build each other. We work together. That is good. Too. And South Africa has been a pioneer when it comes to resources and mining. Yes, although we recently set up a Ministry of Mining and uh, we're working with the locals to ensure that we enhance their capacity, their technical skills in terms of mining, in terms of, you know. Would you say, if someone wanted to visit Kenya, what would you say to them? You know, you're now speaking about Kenya, everything sounds so great and wonderful, but, you know, in the back of some people's mind, you know, Kenya is, is in... Africa, it may not be safe. What would you say to them? I would say that um, if you haven't been to Africa, you haven't seen anything. Good. And I've been to Africa, so I've seen <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Kenya. Absolutely. So. Kenya is beautiful. The people are warm. Uh, from beaches and white sands to lakes, to mountains, to hills, to sandy desert. You have it all in one country. And they can see all that in one time? Like how? In, in, in one trip. In one trip. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. Why not? <laughs> so long as you organize yourself. But once you come to Kenya, you know, you'll come back again and again and again. That's true, because I've been there more than once. <laughs> oh, yes, I know. <laughs> so. I'm oh, and, and our nightlife is fantastic. Okay. Yeah, so for party lovers, you know. Yes. Always something to do. Yes, and I, I know I haven't been to the beaches yet because I've been in Nairobi, but mm -hmm. Mombasa, I was told that's the place to go to really enjoy yourself. The coast is fantastic. They say Mombasa Raha. Mombasa is fun. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. See, I'm learning. I, I, you know, I love doing this program because when I'm interviewing, I learn so much from my guests and always bring in new information. You know, Ambassador, I, again, w just want to congratulate you on your achievement. Thank you very so, much. You know, yes, you're an ambassador, but just to be recognized, it's a big deal. You know, people out there are watching you. There's mm -hmm. that more pressure on you. And the younger generation are looking up to you like, she can make it. There's an opportunity for me to Absolutely. make it as well. 
is there anything that you'd like to say to the younger generation and not just females but the younger generations coming up there's nothing too big there's nothing you can't do pray believe focus and and go for it I think the glass ceiling has already been broken so you know the the door has been opened you just go through it it's already well some people may say it hasn't been broken yet or is it so high that they can't reach it that's what you think until you get there but you have to start what they, the Chinese say a journey of a thousand miles starts with one step so one step after the other one step after the other before you know it you're there okay i'm about to wrap up this program but is there any and you mentioned some great um, quotes and is there anything you want to leave the audience with see you in nairobi <laughs> <laughs> welcome to africa <laughs> Well, again, it is a pleasure, and I'm glad you had the opportunity to come out to Brooklyn. By the way, this program is not only aired in Brooklyn, it goes through different boroughs as well. So there will be others watching you. Okay. Yes. So, so hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> is there anywhere they can reach, like find you on a website or any Yes, contact? I am... Uh, always online so you can get me on twitter my handle is yvonne hamati uh facebook yvonne hamati everywhere yvonne hamati instagram <laughs> yvonne hamati <laughs> <laughs> and you can definitely see the lovely work that she's been doing and just being proactive and a great leader in the work that she is doing Again, thanks again for tuning in to Global Business. Until next time, bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>